I am actually a seventh generation Union County resident. My family has been on our ranch um, between Clayton and Des Moines since the early 1800s. And my parents actually have only been on the ranch for about 15 years um, because they were actually wildlife biologists. They bounced around the country. And then my dad decided, you know what, I'm going to go back to the ranch. And so he called my great-grandmother and she says, I've been waiting for you to call and say you want to come back to the ranch. So we came back to the ranch and I've lived there all my life. Um, I'm homeschooled, so I spend a lot of time working on the ranch. Um, we primarily use four-wheelers. Um, we've just now gotten into horses the last couple years, mostly because I'm into horses. Uh, we run about 2,000 head of yearlings, so it's a different operation than most people in our part of the world. Most people run cows and calves with a very traditional operation. We run yearlings with a little bit more modern. We've used helicopters to round up, um, stuff like that, which I think is great because that's what ranches are going to have to do in order to keep up with the consumer demand because they're going to have to start using the new processes and keep up with all the technology. So my family... Um, told me about this ranch camp and I instantly thought, oh, I've got to go to that. Because through the 4-H and Cowbells organizations is where they had heard of it. And any kind of ranch management thing like this is just so fun because you get to come hang out with a bunch of like-minded kids who live out in the middle of nowhere in a ranch and drive big pickup trucks and you get a lot of different socialization through that. And here at this camp, we have some amazing instructors. Um, we have the executive director of the Beef Council who spoke with us this morning about the international uh, market for beef. And that was a very interesting um, talk that she gave. And we had the NMSU veterinarian come and speak to us about the Beef Quality Assurance Program and stuff like that. Um, personally, today, I think the best lecture, if you want to call it, was probably getting to actually fabricate a beef carcass with, I cannot remember his name, it was one of the instructors from NMSU who teaches the beef class and he let us come in and showed us how to fabricate the beef and all the different cuts of beef and stuff like that and then he actually let us with knives and all kinds of scary utensils go in and cut up the beef and I think the coolest part about that is we're going to get to eat that beef today at this camp and that is just so cool and he one of the cool things that he also told us was NMSU is one of the few if not the only remaining college that students can actually come in to the beef coolers and fabricate a carcass that is one of the only colleges in the country that will let you do that and so I thought that was a really cool thing um, but I'm really looking forward to this week this first day we've got till Friday and I think it's going to be that area and that's this image that you that you basically see on this computer. It's giving you a, basically shooting light down over the top of that that particular um, region. Okay. Okay. So we say we can measure ribeye area in this before. Anybody ever seen those little follicles? Think that they're of any value? DNA testing. It's the newest tool that we kind of have out there right now. And with 25 strands, you can pull hair on an animal and determine quite a bit of stuff. It's important for us to know, as nutritionists, what's being broken down in the room and what's really going on inside the, the stomach. And so, you know, a lot of people say that they have four stomachs, but they really have one stomach, but there's four chambers within the stomach. And so once it gets past this rumen, uh, we get into the abomasum, which is a gastric stomach, just the same as what uh, you and I have. So what are you doing with your hand in there? You're just hanging out, right? Pull, pull, out a, pull out a hand. Yeah, pull, pull out so it gets to death. And so it takes about 24 to 48 hours for, you know, if she takes a bite of grass, for that to actually pass out and go into the, uh, the intestines. 